Hello, welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, your host, helping you discover your love of sewing. And in this edition, I'm gonna do a bit of an, a surprise unboxing. I've got two subscription boxes. One I have opened, one is a total surprise. I have no idea what's inside. It is part of the Maxi Mail subscription box. Uh, she's a very sweet lady. She creates these wonderfully curated subscription boxes. And uh, she sent me a couple as a gift, so we are gonna be doing that. I also wanted to share some news this week. Oh, and if you're watching right now, if you're watching this live and you want to go check out the rest of the Crafts the Unlimited free weekend, go ahead and do that. You, you can come back here later. Um, but I also am going to be sharing some news about Craftsy. If you want to get the Crafts the Unlimited subscription and you are interested, but you haven't been able to take advantage of the free weekend. Okay, so actually we'll talk about that first. Okay, so Crafts the Unlimited... Um, right now they're having a free viewing weekend. So until the, like, I guess for the rest of today, you can watch any of the Craftsy classes for free right now. So if you haven't checked it out, feel free to go ahead and do that. You're welcome to come back here later. I won't be offended. Pro I promise you. But the good thing is, um, and there's details on my website. So if you go to sewingreport.com or if you click the link in the description box, I've got all the details on this. But even if you missed out on the Craftsy Unlimited free weekend, you can get two weeks of Craftsy Unlimited for a dollar. I like where they're going with this. They're, they seem to be offering a lot of sales and promotions, which I think is a good thing, at least to get people over there. So there's, there's some links below. Feel free to check those out. But even if you missed out on the free weekend, I just wanted to let you guys know you're, you're, not, you're not SOL. You can, you can go check it out two weeks for a dollar and I just signed up last week and I wanted to update you as well that I checked my free trial is over and I was indeed able to get the free shipping that was promised so if you do sign up for the annual plan which is hundred and twenty dollars a year which is ten dollars a month which is not bad you can go there and get free shipping on anything in the craftsy supply shop which is a very cool thing and I also wanted to share so I have been sort of perusing around because um, I wanted to give you sort of an honest opinion on Craftsy Unlimited, what I think of it so far. And I got to say, I'm, you know, I, I think it's a great value. Again, I know I've shared before, I don't love all of the classes, but for $10 a month, plus I, I got it on that deal for the $100 in free coupons, I felt I really couldn't go wrong. That kind of brings the cost down almost to like $25 for the year. So I thought that was pretty amazing. And I was looking at some of the classes and I also came to another realization. And that is quite a few of them have free patterns, inclu like included patterns, included templates. So by getting all of those classes, you also get access to all of those free patterns, which I think is great. They're all PDFs. Now, I've signed up for some classes and it involved mailing you a paper pattern. So if you get Craftsy Unlimited, I you don't get the you don't get access to those pa you don't get paper patterns mailed to you, like if you had paid for the class. But for you know I I watched like a bag making class and you got a free pattern for the bag she was making. So I thought that was pretty cool. It was the uh, Janelle McKay like make, I think it was like something about making clutch purses or something. So I've been perusing just to see like what all is included and you get all of the downloadable class materials which I think is a great value because think about it, there's potentially like hundreds of free patterns you're also getting with those video instructions. So if you haven't signed up yet or if you're interested in checking it out, today is your last day for the free viewing weekend. But again, after that, starting tomorrow, you can get two weeks, two weeks of Craftsy Unlimited for $1. I've noticed they're kind of copying what Skillshare is doing. Skillshare has the whole thing like get three months for 99 cents sort of deal, which I did because I'm super cheap. But that's that's deal, the deal with that. I also wanted to share with you an update. If you haven't heard, Free Spirit is not dead. Free Spirit Fabrics is back from the dead because a company called Jaftex Corporation has purchased Free Spirit. They're going to retain all of the designers. Apparently, they're going to be, you know, trying to keep most of the staff. So great new renewed life for Free Spirit. I think that's awesome. And I also posted some information on my website, sewingreport.com. So if you want to read more about that, you can. But I think that's great news because 
the Free Spirit has so many amazing designers that I think it would have been really sad to see them go. Like Tula Pink, uh, Jennifer Paganelli, which is, uh, you know, become sort of a friend of mine. Anna Maria Horner, uh, Heather Heather Bailey, I believe. Of course, Amy Butler, uh, Cat I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Cat Facet. Uh, but they have so many uh, incredible, talented people there. So I'm really happy that they are not going. Hello, everybody. All right, I'm reading the comments. We've got uh, Tiffany, Empress Noel, Ellen, Cynthia, Kirsten, Terry, O, Rosalique, and Aubrey. Hello, everybody. And some exciting news from YouTube. So first of all, thank you, guys. We are, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is exciting. So but next week, we will probably be partying it up here, uh, up in this joint. Uh, so I'll try to get some wine or some, maybe something classy like canned wine. I don't know, but we will be celebrating and I've decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to be sharing. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is, uh, sharing my favorite videos of all time with you, which ones I liked, maybe some behind the scenes type stories, you know, something like that. Um, and I think shortly after that, I got to get myself together, but I'm going to be de-stashing de-stashing when I say de-stashing I mean super cheap um, a bunch of my patterns and stuff over on my de-stash account I think it's let me see what it is I think it's like shop sewing reports I apologize I haven't used it in a while uh, but let me show the the account so if you want if you guys want to keep tabs on that hopefully within the next two weeks I will be posting lots of those uh, sort of a, just as a thank you so here's the deal giveaways are really difficult giveaways have a lot of rules to follow, I think, I'll, and, and honestly, I think a lot of bloggers probably don't adhere to all the FTC rules, but I'm trying to because I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, but my account there is, uh, all right, you probably can't see this. It's at Sewing Report Shop, and um, I'm going to be de-stashing a bunch of, bunch of stuff for hopefully like next to nothing. I got to do U.S. shipping, you know, so if you're outside the U.S., I'm sorry, it's just so expensive. Uh, but I'm going to be de-stashing some bundles and I'm basically going to be, like, giving them to you for, like, just the shipping price. So if you're interested in that, feel free to follow me there. I'm trying to do things for you guys to say thank you without it being a huge legal hassle. That's that's sort of the, uh, the challenges you have when you're doing this. So anyways, thank you guys. Um, I'm so excited about... Almost getting to 10k and YouTube apparently is going like you know how I put the chat window up like this guys Apparently with future live streams, hopefully with this one YouTube will be replaying all the comments because like as it is as it was After the live stream was over you couldn't see anyone's comments You know which you know you kind of can't get the context so that's why I started putting up the chat window like this but if this works this week, I'm going to probably do away with this since people will be able to see the chat as they're watching it back. So I think I'm probably going to be doing that uh, just because, I mean, this isn't probably the best solution anyways. It's sort of like a workaround. But I'm very excited because I think if YouTube does that, that will be awesome. And uh, once I get to 10K, apparently you get uh, like a community tab so you guys can talk to each other in between videos and between shows. And we can have a discussion there. I can post things there. So I'm really excited about that. So yes, yeah, so lots of things happening this week. I have been uh, working on, I worked on a uh, kind of a DIY project for the Reddit gift exchange, which I signed up for. So that's been happening. But yeah, so I'm excited. I think, I think, I don't know why YouTube didn't have the chat replayed with the live streams anyways. I mean, that makes sense, especially if people are answering comment, you know, answering questions or comments. You have no context when you can't see the original chat. So as long as YouTube does it this week, I'm going to keep this up as kind of a safe a safeguard just in case something goes wrong. But if that is indeed the case, uh, then I will be um, not doing the chat window anymore. So that means I will be more more in your face here. But that that's the good thing because that means YouTube will be saving all of your comments. So I'm pretty excited about that. So, yeah, that's what that's what's happening. Yeah, okay, so we got some comments. Okay. And Empress Noah, what uh, what link are you looking for? Let me know. Uh, Russell Leak, what? Craftsy, I'm an international viewer, and apparently I don't qualify for any perks. What the? Okay, wow, so I guess that's only a you. Come on, Craftsy. Okay, so me, all right, I'm then that. It looks like it is just for U.S. 
Residents only? Okay. I'm so sorry. It feels like everything is for U.S. residents only. And for you guys outside of the United States, I know you're probably like, seriously, what the hell? Because, you know, that that, do, that does kind of suck. Okay, the D, okay, the D-Stash account, I think, is linked in there. Let me, let me see here. I think it is. It might just be further down. All right, I'm checking. Okay, okay, yes. Okay, so the... Okay, I think it's, all right, the D-Stash link is just going to be at Sewing Report Shop on Instagram. I will comment right now. Okay. Okay, so I just linked, so it's at Sewing Report Shop on Instagram, and I'm trying to do this the best I can, so here's the deal with the giveaways. Like, if I do them on YouTube, like, you're not even supposed to ask people to, like, like the video to enter or, like, leave a comment to enter. Apparently, the, like, I think this is kind of a newer rule from YouTube. You're not allowed to do that. I think if I did giveaways in the future, I would probably do them on sewingreport.com. So maybe I can do something like that. I'm just trying to figure, like, there's so much legal, legal mumbo jumbo. The other aspect is that all of every country and even every state in the United States has different rules for giveaways. So it's pretty much next to impossible for you to, unless you're hiring an outside company to conduct the giveaway, which I cannot afford presently, you're, you, there's no way you can possibly adhere to all of the, the rules and regulations. So that's my sticky point. So that's why if I, I think if I de-stash these things cheaply, Again, I apologize to the folks outside the United States. I'm probably only going to be able to do it for U.S. residents. In fact, I shipped something out this week to New York State for the Reddit gift exchange. It cost me thirteen like sixty five for like a fairly small box that didn't weigh that much. Shipping costs are uh, are just out of control, so that kind of stinks. Um, so I'm, yes, but I am going to be destashing some patterns and stuff. I think I'll be doing like bundles. So like you, you know, maybe trying to do like five patterns for maybe like five to ten patterns for like five dollars shipping included in the U.S. Because I can do like envelopes and it's not that expensive. So I probably will be doing that kind of as a thank you to everybody here. Um, you're the ones that helped me get here. So I really, really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to having kind of a 10K party next week unless a, a ton of you unsubscribe. And if you do that, hey, you know what? I, I understand that too. So that's, that's totally cool. Um, all right, let's read some comments. Aubrey, I'm stoked to know that you live relatively close. I know you are on a fabric fast band. Yes, I am. Have you ever checked out Fabric Town in Stockbridge? I have not, Aubrey, but maybe in 2019 that will be on the list. <laughs> yeah, I know this year it's been a little, I'm having a little bit of regret. i not a lot of regret, but it's been a little difficult. But at the same time, good. And uh, if I do go fabric shopping, it's going to be like to Goodwill or the Target clearance section to look for like random textiles I can repurpose. All right, Carol, I also have a Janome 7700 and I would love for you to do a how-to for them. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe like a review on my Janome 7700. Maybe I'll do something like that. I do, I don't know, I've done a how-to on how to use a sewing machine in general. That probably, that works for a lot of models. Um, I don't, and here's the thing, I don't consider myself an expert on Janome or any brand. You know, I like what I like. Um, I use these machines personally, but I definitely would not say I am a full-scale expert. But Carol, if you have any questions, um, we just did a sewing chat with uh, Jason and Brenda of Pink Castle Fabrics. And if you have any questions about Janome, they're the people to ask. Hit them up. Um, I linked up in the cards. So if you click, click the eye up in your right-hand corner, You'll see the sewing chat with Brenda and Jason of Pink Castle Fabrics. Get in touch with them. If you have any questions, they would be more than happy to answer. They're, they're, the, Janome, they're the true Janome experts. And I would, I would definitely hit them up. They're very cool. If you, if you have anything you need or just or want, have any questions you're wondering about. I like the Janome 7700 quite a bit. Um, but you know what? I've also been using the Eversewn pretty frequently. And I like them both for different reasons. And uh, they're, they're both good machines. Okay, let's see here. Rebecca, that's my excuse for buying so much fabric. All the sellers have a high minimum to qualify for sh free shipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you, fabric.com. Yeah, everyone's like, free shipping if you order $75. You're like, how can I get to $75? 
Kirsten, it's very complicated to donate children's items in the U.S. too. That's one reason there were so many donation organizations for other countries. I know, right? Um, Cynthia, isn't it cheaper to use USPS priority boxes? Cynthia, that's what I was using. I was using the, like, priority mail flat rate, and it was, like, 13 The medium box is over $13. They've definitely raised the prices because it used to be, like, like $11, even, like, last year. So, but, yeah. Anyways, okay, so... I wanted to show you guys uh, some boxes. So I've done some unboxing of, and I'll get rid of the chat for now just so people can see. So I've done some unboxings of the Maxi, all right, hopefully you guys can see this, the Maxi mailboxes in the past. And um, I like them. I like them quite a bit. So, uh, you know, I'm a fan. All right, I might try to move this just a little bit just so, let's see here, just so that people can see the boxes a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to show you the January and February boxes that Maxi sent me. Now, these were sent to me for free, um, but I will say I think Maxi's a really super cool lady, really trying to help people learn to sew. So I'm a fan. If you're interested, the boxes are $35 a month plus free shipping. Again, I'm so sorry. I think, I think she's only shipping to the United States. But get in touch with her if you have any questions. She's just very sweet. She's just such a sweetheart. And... Um, so I wanted to show you what's in the January and February boxes. So this is the January box. And uh, this had supplies to make quilt labels in it. Sorry for the... So it came with this uh, CD. All right, sorry. The focus is a little off. So it came with this CD called Quilt Label Collective. Let me see if I can... All right. All right, the focus on this is a little funky. And uh, this has some stuff on a CD, I believe, to, for you to uh, make your own quilt labels. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, let's see. This next thing, she sent some printable paper. Okay, so in here, this is a, okay, what's this? Oh, this is a uh, sample quilt label. And, it, and they all have, you can make your own QR code. Sorry, the focus on this is a little, a little funky. So you can make your own QR code on your quilt label so someone can get more information about the quilt. You can leave them a message. Uh, but this is just an example of a quilt label that you could make. Now, um, I don't have a color printer currently. I only have a laser jet. So I was a little bit bummed because you can really do some cool labels if you do have a color printer. Um, it came with some paper. This is a like printer, like printable paper. So it's fabric, so it's basically like printable fabric. So she included a few sheets of those, which is pretty neat. And let's see, we've also got some, some tapestry needles, very nifty. So I'm guessing this is for you to maybe like hand sew your quilt label onto your quilt. And there's also a couple of uh, Micron pens. I believe these are for fabric, right? So a couple Micron pens. I've never had one of the like their archival ink. If anyone's ever had these before, what do you normally use them for? So this, she, she gave me two shades. One's like a brown color and the other is black. Um, and Maxie also likes to include candy. Oh, and these are cute. Okay, so here's some, okay, some thread and a couple buttons. This is all the January Maxi Makes box. Let's see here. Um, okay, Maxie's business card. Definitely check her out. She's just, she's just super, super nice. I love this woman. And uh, as a little treat, some little Andy's mints. I feel like I am at a restaurant. All right, let's eat one right now, actually. Why, you know, why not? Let's eat. Okay. I like chocolate mints. Okay. All in all, a very tasty January box. But I think this is a really neat idea. She included a lot of the stuff you need to get started making quilt labels. And I've never really made them this way, so I'm excited to kind of check this all out. And see what it's all about. I also like how she... I really appreciate how well she packaged the printable paper so that it did not get crushed. She put it in this cardboard, you know, thing. So that it would ship pretty well. So I thought that was pretty nifty. All right, so now we're going to move on to the February box. All right, one more look at the January box. We're going to look at the February box. 
which I have no idea what's in this. Um, this is going to be a complete surprise. Okay. Let's see. All right, this. Can I get this box open? Okay. And hello, everybody. All right, I see Ellen. All right, Vic is here. She's fostering a pregnant cat. Wow, that's that sounds like a handful there. Ooh, she's got the cat flu. All right, Rebecca says she uses micron pens for writing on quilt labels and coloring on bo over bobbin threads that don't match your fashion fabric and pop up where you don't want them. Good tip there. All right, so this is the February box. All right, let me... There we go. Sorry, the camera's not focusing super well. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Okay. Okay, this looks... All right, so I already see we got some thread. I'm really... I will say these subscription boxes are really helping me to build up my selection of threads. Uh, so that's kind of nice. I... I'm getting so many spools of thread, I don't have to buy any for quite some time. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Oh, this looks... I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty cute. Oh, and there's food in here. Okay. It's always a good doing. There's food in here. Alright, there's a Biscoff cookie in here. Which uh, is actually one of my favorite things to eat that are sweet. So, alright, I'm already a fan of this box. Ooh, okay. This looks, okay, this looks interesting. Oh, there's like two Biscoffs in here. Oh, not two for the price of one, folks. Okay. There's a fabric glue stick in here. Now, I think uh, there was a fabric glue stick in a previous box. But you know what? Uh, I feel like you could never have too many of these. So I think that's, you know, I'm down. I'm down with the fabric glue stick. Um, there are some, there's some fabric in here. And it says it's the Folded Star Hot Pad Kit. Oh, that looks cute. So it looks like there might be a little paper piecing in here. All right, so here is... Let me try to show you this so that... So it came with a little bundle of fabric. And... Yeah, a little picture. This looks pretty adorable. Okay, I like this. It came with some cotton batting. Okay, cotton batting. It's pretty nifty. And, uh, oh, okay, yeah, paper piecing all the way here. Oh, this is kind of nice. I like that it came with the template already, so I don't have to, like, trace anything. Oh, this is cool. So this is, I'm gonna guess this is, like, wash away stabilizer or something. So it came with, like, a few of these. Oh, this is neat. All right, so this is, it looks like there's enough for six blocks in here. This is pretty nifty. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to use this, but I'm going to guess the video instruction is going to tell me how. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So these are, um, folded star hot pad interfacing templates. All right, it says this. This panel provides six additional templates for making the easy machine sewn folded star hot pad Folded star squared and amazing hot pad table runner patterns. Okay. Amazing hot pad table or instructions for making a folded star hot pad can be found in these patterns. So it looks like, I don't know if this, this kind of looks like it's wash away uh, stabilizer. I'm not really sure. Um, but it looks like you can make, you can have your choice of having, um, having it be like round square or like a little, you know, like, was it like a hexagon shape? Okay. Hey, and it's kind of nice. You don't have to, like, trace. I like that you don't have to, like, trace or, like, you know, do a whole lot of work to get there. So you already have these templates. You have six of them. And I suppose if you wanted to make more, you could probably, you could probably photocopy. You could probably, like, photocopy this onto, uh, you know, like, you could probably scan and copy it and print it out again if you wanted to make more. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it looks like paper piecing paper. It's very, like, lightweight. It kind of feels like that Swedish tracing paper I reviewed. Okay. So that is pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, alright, and I'm looking at your comments. Yes, Carol, I will be 
and I say de-stashing so it's not officially a contest. I'm going to be de-stashing a bunch of my stuff. Let's just say really, really cheap. Um, so if you're interested in that, at Sewing Report Shop. I have to take pictures for this stuff and, uh, you know, figure out what I'm going to do. Um, but I am going to be, uh, you know, doing this uh, doing this uh, for probably, probably like after next week. So I'll be announcing everything next week for the hopefully 10,000 subscriber party. Um, and unfortunately, it's uh, going to be for U.S. residents just because, again, the shipping costs outside the U.S. are really crazy. Um, okay, what else is in here? So I apologize in advance. Ooh. All right, this is a straight... All right, came with a straight tailor's all from, from Clover. Okay. Okay, so so far from what I'm getting is that we're going to be making these... Uh, Folded star hot pads. Okay, here we go. Here's the pattern. I apologize. The focus is kind of not great here. Okay, I've never made these before. They look complicated. I'm going to guess they're not as complicated as they look. Um, on the back, though, it, I like this idea. It looks like um, you can make pot holders. So you can make like six pot holders or something. Six, was it six? Yeah, six pot holders out of what they included. So that's pretty nifty. I've not done that before. Yeah, it does look sort of complicated, but uh, hopefully not as complicated as it could be. Okay, so you can do like a square shape. You can do a, and it even tells you how to make the little hanger thing, which is pretty, pretty nifty. So I think this is pretty neat. All right, Empress Noel has a new suggestion for Miss Lisa's Sewing School, two brand new two videos. So that's awesome. Maxi Max is here. Maxi, hello. Okay, Maxi's here to answer our question. All right, so she says the kit makes one hot pad and the other, other items inside the box are needed to complete it. I'm excited. For this one, I'm definitely going to need that video lesson for sure. So I think this looks like a really cute pattern. I like this a lot. I think it would make a really... Fun gift, I think. And this, again, looks like another good stash buster if you are, you know, looking for something like, you know, kind of quicker projects to make that use up fabric scraps you have. So, Maxi, thank you for joining us. Uh, Maxi's here. Yay! Woohoo! All right, let me put up the chat window again. And uh, I'm kind of interested, Empress Noelle, in checking out this uh, Miss Lisa sewing school. I Because I could clearly use it. Um, and that's the thing, I'm definitely not a sewing expert, I'm a sewing enthusiast. Um, hopefully sharing things I like, my projects, that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Maxi, I gotta say, I'm excited about this. This looks like a really cool project. I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but that's okay. Um, uh, because hopefully I'm gonna learn what I need to do. Because I have no idea. So this looks really, I like this little paper. I don't know if this like washes out or if, I mean it's pretty thin so it doesn't look like it's maybe it's like tearaway stabilizer I don't know um, but I'm really glad I keep getting these glue sticks in the boxes because I like these aren't something I I've been buying myself but it's something that I I do appreciate and I love Biscoff cookies uh, let me see what the fabric line is here I'm not sure what the fabric line is I think it's I, I'm I'm I have no doubt it's art gallery fabrics but uh, this looks really cool. I'm excited about the video. Okay, so it's not paper piecing. It's okay. So these are folded prairie points. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing with this. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to look at the the pattern though, because I clearly I clearly need some some help here. So uh, all right, yeah. So we've got some questions here. Uh, let's see here. And thank you, Maxie, for being here. We're really excited. I know Maxie, and by the way, Maxie, I do want to clarify this. She is not asking me to make videos. In fact, she keeps emailing me and telling me not to make videos. Um, but I told her I can't make any promises. So, you know, I don't know. All right, the fabrics are Bonnie, Christine, and Pat Bravo from Art Gallery. They're very cute. I am excited. I think those hot pads look really... Again, this would be a great, I think, hostess gift if you're, you know, going, going to someone's house. Maybe you don't know them super well. You want to make them something that looks cool, you know, but uh, yeah, I know, I have no, so those are prairie points. 
Yeah, I have no idea how that happens. I need to do some, I, I clearly need this lesson. So I'm excited, let me open up the pattern. All right. Um, yeah, I've never done prairie points. I've seen prairie points done on some like quilts and on some like throw pillows and stuff. Or I think I've even seen them on dish towels, but I don't know how to do them. So that looks, all right, one interfacing template included with pattern, okay. This is pretty neat. Oh, and here's another one inside too, wow, okay. So now you get enough to make like seven of them. Okay, so for me that's good because if I like screw this up, you know, and the good thing is um, I have, I have like paper like this um, that I, that I got. So I actually could scan this. I suppose I could scan this and, um, you know, do something else with it. So that'd be pretty cool. So maybe I'll do that because I do have a scanner. So yeah, so you get this in here. It's called by Plum Easy Patterns. Deborah Miller. So yeah, I think what I might do is use my computer, my, or use my scanner to scan this one just to save the pattern. I don't know if there's an E, I don't know, Maxie, is there an E copy of the pattern as well? I'm not sure, uh, but that's pretty awesome. Oh, you can also get hot pad interfacing template refills in three and 12 packs. So you can get more so you don't have to keep doing that. This is a really cool project. I am excited. Wow, yeah, I definitely need help. I have no idea. I have no idea how to do this. This looks, okay, this looks kind of difficult for me. So yeah, I definitely need the uh, the lesson. I don't know what I'm doing. This is definitely interesting to me. So, uh, okay, so it looks like you need to make, okay, yeah, I'm already confused. I'm gonna need, I'm certainly, I'm definitely gonna need a, uh, some help here. This is a, something I have not done before. Um, it looks complicated. I'm sure it's probably easier than it looks. I just don't know what I'm do, doing, so I'm definitely gonna need, and it looks like you have to make the prairie points in different sizes for them to like line up. Okay, yeah, this looks, uh, yeah, I don't know. This looks uh, interesting. I'm intrigued, I'm very intrigued. So that's the February box and uh, all right, I, Valerie, I hope I do great. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, we're going to, oh, I mean, I'm certainly going to try. We're definitely going to try and see, uh, see what happens. But, uh, you know, I, and actually, that's the cool thing. I don't need to make a video about this because Maxie has already made a video tutorial. Um, so it's included in the February box. So if you have not already checked it out, definitely do that. I, uh, I really hope there's some videos for this because I, Definitely, I'm gonna need them, and also I'm excited. Like, thank you, uh, Empress Noel. I'm. I, th I think this Miss Lisa Sewing School looks kind of interesting. So, anyways, uh, yeah. What are you guys doing this week? How's everybody doing? We'll read some comments. Okay, Terry says, "Don't worry if you can fold fabric in half and iron, you can make prairie points." Okay, good to know. Yeah, I've not done prairie points. They look really nice. I like the I like the effect they give. All right, iron what you copy to freezer paper, and then you can run it to your, through your printer, okay? Cool, cool, cool. All right, Aubrey is making eight ballet costumes. Woo! For for Beauty and the Beast? Wow. Okay, that, that looks pretty, uh, that looks pretty intense. All right, and Maxie, thank you for being here. She says all the, oh, Maxie. See, Maxie is making the work really easy for us. She says all the fabric is pre-cut, just fold into the prairie point and glue into place. No worries. It's easy. Okay, so that's good to know. So all the fabric is uh, already cut for you. Wow, okay, that looks really neat. All right, Valerie just started the Fitbit. You know, Valerie, I had a Fitbit a couple years ago. And uh, so funny story. I, was, I used the Fitbit for about two weeks and then I kind of gave up on it. I'm sorry. Um... But we went boating with the Fitbit, and the boating motion of the boat recognized as, like, walking. So it, like, artificially, like, totally jacked up the amount of steps I was doing from being on a boat. Uh, so anyways, the point of the story is if you want to cheat with your Fitbit, uh, go boating, I guess. All right, Empress Noel made my first Cleo dungaree dress and a baby quilt. Yay! And Ellen's looking for a quilt pattern that's not too hard. 
I am expecting my first grandchild in August. That's awesome. So Ellen, I'm actually also working on a baby quilt right now for some friends. And I'm just doing 60 degree triangles. I just cut out like a gazillion triangles um, and some half triangles for like the ends. And I'm just uh, sewing them together. Uh, it's, a ge it's for a baby boy, so it's got to be pretty gender neutral. That is a really easy quilt pattern. Another one, um, and I'm talking quilt patterns that look more modern, maybe modern and like less patchworky. Another good one is the, um, I would say that the half triangle quilt. So you can just uh, cut, you know, do half, you know, do uh, like half square triangles. And that kind of gives a cool modern look. Another one is, okay, so Rebecca has a suggestion, pinwheel blocks using triangles on a roll or thangles. Okay, that's a good one. And another one I think that would be good is, um, what, what was it called? Um, it's where you take a nine patch and then you cut it down the center. There was a name for it. I can't remember. So basically you um, sew together nine, nine squares so that it's a, a big square. Cut it down the center, but, you know, this way and that way. And then you get like, there's a name for this. I, if anyone can remember the name, I don't know why. I can't remember the name right now. But if you then sew those blocks together, it gives you a really interesting, like, geometrical... Like, I once did a quilt like that, and it was it was great. Uh, so I can't remember what the name is. I'm trying to remember. If anyone knows, please tell me. All right, and Terry is, I'm hoping the kids go to have school so I can get to B6380. Awesome. All right. Valerie, all right, you're not going to cheat on your Fitbit. I totally did. Um... I didn't intend to. It just sort of happened. I just came back from pinning wedding gowns and brides. Are you getting married? Very cool. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rebecca has the name Disappearing Nine Patch. So that's what it's called. If you look up the Disappearing Nine Patch, it's really easy. You just sew nine squares together, cut it in half, cut it in half, and then you get like squares that have a... The squares make it look like... Those new blocks make it look like you did a whole lot of work, but you didn't. So that's a good one, too. Um, I also bought a book by, I think it was Amy Ellis, and it had nine, like, simple, uh, like, quilts to make. So I've done a few of those. I mean, there's so many options for easy quilt tops. But yeah, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of options. People are having, okay. Oh, this is a good one. Simple quilt with squares on the diagonal. Okay, I like that. That would be cool, and that would look, it would just give it a different look than just your standard patchwork. So I think that's a good suggestion I gotta say I'm ex I'm excited about this folded stuff like if you can use prairie points to get something that looks like that you know that'd be pretty cool um anyways thank you so much Maxi makes for the wonderful box I'm I feel spoiled very spoiled and uh I, you know I just can't thank you enough all right Maggie is uh Valerie I'm too old to get married you're never too old to get married come on I'm doing alterations uh, Maggie says, this week I need to sew some summer clothes for my son. We're headed to Disney World. Woohoo! And he has no shorts that fit anymore. Oh, maybe some new tops. Show us some pictures, Maggie. Hashtag sewing report squad. I think next next week I'll also show some uh some some maybe some of your photos. It's been a while since I've done that. But uh next week we're definitely gonna do our Unless a ton of people unsubscribe again, we're going to do a 10K party. You know, again, you never say, I feel like you shouldn't be like, so like, yeah, it's definitely going to happen. I mean, I don't know what, truthfully, I don't know what could happen. Anything could happen. And um, so I wanted to share, so I'm trying to get better with my, my filming and editing. So I've been watching a lot of tutorials about film, you know, filmmaking, color correction, all this other stuff. Um, cause I do want the videos to start looking a little bit better. Um, you know, and here's the thing, like, I just want to share with you just because I'm, I have a background as a TV producer does not mean I have the technical experience. So like, uh, my job involved more the editorial side, like what guests we were going to do, like what we were going to shoot and then doing the writing. And there is actually writing involved in TV. There's usually scripts with everything. Um, but I always had a photographer. I was always working with a photographer, editor, you know, director. Um, we, at, on a local level, we didn't really have lighting people. So it was always like the photographer doing the lighting as well. So now that I'm doing everything on my own, um, there's just a lot more levels of complication and things that I haven't done before. Um, I'd never done graphics before. I'd never done, um, lighting or really filming on a serious level. 
Uh, so for me, it's like learning that all over again. I feel um, like part of this is super easy for me, like the, just, you know, coming up with ideas and how to execute them. It's just actually executing them that for me is the hard part. So if you have any suggestions for where you, you know, kind of what you would like to see on this channel, let me know. What you Tell me what kind of videos do you like on this channel too. But uh, next week we will hopefully be celebrating and talking about some of my favorite videos. And also I want to share kind of more where the channel is going and where, where I'd like it to go. Uh, so we'll, we'll be doing that. All right, we got some more comments. Uh, Ellen says, I just bought a book of 110 quilted pot holders. That's a lot of pot holders. But you can also make quilt squares or wall hangings. That's the good thing. If you have like orphan quilt blocks, you can just turn them into pot holders or hot pads. So that's a good thing. Ellen, and they're supposedly supposed to be easy. There's a lot of neat patterns to it. Very nice. That's a lot of pot holders. Like, I can't believe someone wrote a book of 110 different pot holders you could make. I mean, I'm sure there are. I just wouldn't be able to think of 110 wait, things to do. So hopefully this week, I'm, uh, so I did buy another dollhouse kit. So I'm hoping to get that started. Um, but I also really want to um, do some stuff. I just really want to watch a bunch of videos and do some learning on the editing and filming front. Because again, I do want to get, I do want these things to be better. All right, Maggie, I'll share the shorts with the squad. Yes, hashtag and let you know how I like the pattern. Sounds awesome. And I'm excited. I, I do, I want to make some, I think I don't need, okay, so here's where I am with my personal sewing projects. I'm not really in the vibe for right now of sewing a bunch of stuff for myself, um, like making a bunch of women's clothes. I already have a lot of clothing. So I really do think this year I want to focus more on making gifts for other people. Maybe people who aren't expecting it. I have a lot of people in my life that I want to make something for. And I'm going to try to get through some of those things. Rebecca, good to know. I have lots of Insul Bright, so I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I use Insul Bright a lot. All right, Terry's got a suggestion, M6548. I'm assuming those are shorts, I'm going to guess. Uh, but yeah, this is, we're having a good time here. I'm excited. And again, I want to thank Maxi for the January and February boxes. I think this uh, folded star hot pad looks pretty neat. Um, but yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I, I do definitely want to like scan this so I can save it. Because, you know, I, I do want to make sure I still have this. You know, just so I can, I can print it out and stuff. But yeah, this is definitely like 8.5 by 11 paper. Very cool. And uh, yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. I cannot, I cannot wait to get started and, and give that a try. So yeah, it looks like all you have to do is uh, literally it comes with the fabric already pre-cut. I mean, how much easier can that get? So I think this is pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, PlumEasyPatterns.com and also MaxiMakes.com if you want to check that out. Oh, Vic, no, the Insel Bright I brought at my, bought at my local shop shriveled when I touched my iron to it. Oh, no, that's not good. Right, Cecilia's here. She's making baby clothes, wonderful hoodies, jeans, dungarees, onesie. That's a lot of sewing. That is a lot of sewing. Okay, Terry says the pattern M6548 is for uh, shorts, tee, and a button down. That's a good value there. Wow. You you know, Vic, I have not had that experience with, with Inselbright. Were, were you buying the name brand Inselbright or was it like a different brand? All right, Maxie, thank you Th again. Thank you. And uh, everyone show, definitely show Maxie some love. Uh, you can, if you're interested in signing up for the subscription boxes, um, I would say these are good for someone who, one, likes surprises, two, wants to get like a sewing lesson in a box every month, comes with a, a video instruction, all the supplies you need, and usually a little fun extras, you know, like, uh, like Biscoff, like Biscoff cookies. So if you're into that, the boxes are $35 a month plus $5 shipping. Uh, so about $40. Um, I think this just the stuff she includes is just really cool. And uh, I have to say, I'm a fan. Yeah, it comes with batting, comes with your fabric, comes with a glue stick. And I'm, I'm excited. I haven't actually tried out the glue sticks yet. But uh, I now have two sticks, so I feel like I'm well. I feel like I'm well stocked up. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to sign off for today. I want to try to do some shooting experiments. 
And uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know also what, what, is there anything you'd like me to do next week for the 10k party? I know we said maybe, maybe have a little, little bubbly. I think I'm going to do some cheap wine because that's the way I roll and I'm really cheap. Um, and also I'm, after this live show is over, I'm very curious to see if the comments actually do replay, you know, in YouTube instead of me just putting them on the screen. So, uh, so we'll have to see. All right, and Valerie has a question for Maxie. Maxie, if you're still here. Valerie, what's your question? So, yeah, I mean, we might as well take advantage. Maxie's a wonderful quilter. She's also a handy quilter rep. She knows a lot about long-arm quilting machines as well. Uh, but, Valerie, shoot away if you've got the, the question. Fire away. And, uh, Maxie, if you're still here, well, let's see what the question is. I know, sorry, I'm so distracted. I need to eat, I do need to eat something. Um, so I've, probably after this show is finished, I'm going to eat some lunch and then I'm going to try to work on some stuff. I know, Rebecca, I'm super cheap. I know people are like, have some, have some, you know, uh, 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 where people say, you know, buy some margaritas or something, you know. And I, over on my other channel, Gen Talks Forever, I, I, I did tape and edit a uh, wine review so we'll we'll see how that goes we'll see all right valerie wants to know if she can do one box only um you know maxi i don't i don't know the answer to that let me look on the website but maxi if you're here let us let us know so valerie wants to know if she can buy one box and i don't know the answer to that let's see here looking on the website Okay, like, uh, like, I guess, like, if she can do, like, month to month. Aubrey wants to know about a sew-along. You know, maybe we'll do something like that. Um, okay, Maxie says you can sign up, then cancel. There is no minimum. Okay, so, Valerie, you can do one box. So, if you wanted to sign up for February. I'm not sure what the cutoff. Maxie, if, is there a cutoff for February? There might be. Um, but I will say, all of the boxes I've gotten from Maxi, I've been pretty happy with. Also, my college roommate and friend, uh, she signed up for the Maxi Make subscription as well, and she says she's loving it. Uh, so I'm excited. That is good to know. So you can sign up, then cancel. Sort of like signing up for free trials and then canceling. All right. Let's see here. Rebecca has a tip to use, uh, flat felt seams or false flat felt seams. Awesome. You know, I've never heard of a false flat seam, flat felt seam before. I'm gonna have to look that up. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm glad you're here to give us some good tips. Flat. I'm curious. False. Flat felt. I'm the type of person too that Google's everything that I like. If I have a question, I'm like, I need to Google that. Okay, I found a tutorial. Ooh. All right, that looks interesting. Okay, finish it off. Trim. Ooh. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. So you like surged it. Oh, okay. There's no need to finish the seam because it's encased. Okay, cool. I like that. Make sure the seam is flat on the right side before continue and it's surged. Okay, that's cool. All right. What sewing machine that you use do you like the best? Oh, that's a hard one. Okay. <laughs> you know, um... Which sewing machine do you like the best? You know, it's a tough call. I like them for different reasons. Um, okay, and uh, I would say, all right, for quilting, for quilting, I like the Janome 7700 because it has a large throat space and I do like the AccuFeed foot. Um, but I think for making clothing, I've actually been liking the Eversewn. Um, it's, it's a little like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain this, but, uh, I, I feel like the Janome is a bit overkill for clothing, and I feel like the Eversewn has become kind of comfortable for, for garment making. Um, also, I, I love my brother 1034D Serger. I also have a sale right, um, the, like, LZ, LSZ1 or whatever, the one that does the zigzag stitch. Um, someone asked me to do kind of a video about that. I might, I just need to play around with it more because it's been so, it's been so long since I've tried to use it and I had trouble. So I got frustrated and I just like didn't want to do it. So I know I'm, I'm kind of a weenie, you know, I don't know. All right. Um, 
Rebecca, I'm really old and have been doing this for a long time. Rebecca, don't say that, girl. Don't say that. We're not old. I know you just turned 29, but, you know, that's not old. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, Maxie, the cutoff has passed for February, but for your viewers here, contact me and I will make an exception. Holy cow. Okay, that's really very cool of you, Maxie. So if you are interested in getting the star in the uh, folded star hot pad box February, Maxie says, con I mean, you probably can't contact her like a year from now uh, about this box, but um, we're taping this. This is March of 2018. So if you're contacting her within the month, she might be able to help you out. Uh, but contact her and see if she's she's got some. Some more February boxes. I think this box, I'm so excited about these templates because I don't have to like print and tape stuff together or something. But I will say I do want to save the, um, I do want to save this template and use it for, uh, use it to scan. All right, Valerie has some suggestions. B820 for quilting and burning a 750 for business. Very nice. All right. And Maxie also wants to say the boxes are good for beginners and experienced sewists. I have a video tutorial for each box on a members only page. And yes, I am I am part of the members only uh, page and uh, it's uh, it's great. And her videos are very, um, they're very well explained. Like sometimes you go to tutorials and you, you leave with questions. I feel like with Max, Maxie's instructions, I don't have any questions, which I think makes it a good tutorial. I've already shared some of the crafty classes I are hit or miss. Again, overall, I think overall you really can't go wrong with the crafty subscription. I think it's a great overall. I think it's a great value. Um, if I want to take a sewing class in person, it would probably cost between fifty and seventy-five dollars for like a class. Plus, you have to bring your own supplies and stuff. And for a whole year, I can get. A craftsy subscription, a craftsy subscription for about double the, a little over double the price, but you get like access to thousands of, I don't know how many classes they have. They have a lot of classes, um, and they're adding more classes all the time. All right, Liz has a suggestion. Her Juki 1020Q. I've heard good things about that machine. She has a Baby Lock Evolve Serger and a Husqvarna Viking Emerald for totes and clothes. You know, and that's the other thing I want to say is that um, I'm not loyal to one sewing machine brand in particular. I like them for different reasons. I've sewn on quite a few uh, sewing workshops. If you have a sewing like convention or a sewing, a big sewing event in your area, you may be able to try out different machines without paying for them. Like if you, like if you go to a class, it gives you, a, you do pay for the class, but it gives you a really good chance to test drive a machine for an extended period amount of time. And uh, if you also, if you go to these shows out in like the vendor area, they have tons of machines and you can try them all out. I did this at QuiltCon. I did this at the Sewing Expo. It's a really good way for you to become familiar with different machines and how they work. For instance, um, for one piecing class, like I took a, like a patchwork quilt class with Mary Fonts and we used baby lock machines. I really enjoyed sewing on the baby lock machines. I did. Now, they were a bit out of my price range, so I do not own a baby lock machine, but I enjoyed sewing on it, you know? So, I mean, you can, and that's the thing, we're all different. We all have different preferences. We all have different machines we like. So, I think that's why I don't tend to hate on other things because, you know what? This is just my opinion. This is my experience. I may like one thing. You may hate it and vice versa. Um, the same thing goes when people make tutorials. I really dislike seeing people telling them they're doing it wrong. I mean, yeah, there are some things that kind of may seem blatantly not a good idea, like not a good idea. But I also have to remember, you know what? Everyone does things in a different way and that's okay. That's what they're doing necessarily isn't wrong and you're right. Like, and that's the thing I don't like about some of the comments I see when people are like, you know, you should have done it this way. Well, it's like, you know what, this is the way I like. For instance, I was talking to somebody this past week about, um, we're both using Adobe Premiere Pro to edit videos. And she was telling me about her editing experience. And it was a lot different than mine. And I was curious because I was like, you know, what are you doing? And I learned some things from her, you know, just by talking to her about what she's been doing. So sometimes you can talk to someone maybe about a certain technique you're doing 
and find out they may do it in a totally different way than you. So I think that's the thing. I think we can all learn from each other. And I think I would like to see more um, people being a little more open-minded maybe about certain things rather than just being so closed off and being like my way or the highway. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, you can go to imright.com, but... You know, I like talking to people with different opinions because you learn more. Um, for instance, I am friends with, I, I will not share my political views here. I don't think this is the place for it, but I have a lot of friends, a lot of family members who have very different political views than myself. Now, on one hand, I could say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unfriend everyone on Facebook or something. But at the same time, I think it's really good to have an open dialogue with other people and, and, Listen to them. Listen to what they have to say so that, you know, you can, and I think it's okay for you to question what your own beliefs are or what your own um, ways of doing things are. For instance, I might be doing something one way for a long time and then I find someone else is doing it in a way that I think is better and easier. I'm going to switch over to that method instead and there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Uh, oh, we got some. All right. Liz wants to ask if I'm going to the expo this week in Atlanta. Liz, probably not. I just have a lot of stuff I need to do this week. I've gone before and I enjoyed it. But uh, again, I already spent money on the Craftsy. I know I hate to say this. I spent money on the Craftsy subscri subscription. And why is Craftsy so hard to say sometimes? Subscription. It's like a tongue twister. But, uh, you know, I so I think I'm probably going to do the online lessons. I just, you know, I went to the sewing expo. It cost probably like two to three hundred dollars for me to take a few classes that is a little bit expensive I enjoyed my time there and I did learn a lot um, but it's something I'm gonna have to skip this time around just for budgetary reasons Vic unless you're hurting yourself or your machine it's not wrong I'm with you Jen I hate getting that comment from more experienced sewists um, and and that's the thing I think these people mean I think they're well-intentioned but I also don't want to scare anyone away by telling them they're doing something wrong. If they like doing it, it's not hurting anybody and they're, they're pleased with the outcome. I think that's what matters. All right, Rebecca, I own many different types of machines of various types. Foff, Brother, Baby Lock, Janome Brother, and Serger. I appreciate them all. Wonderful. All right, Vic, now are there better ways to do things? Maybe. And you know what? Some, I, I want to, some things are eat. Like some things are easier for some people. Some other people might something find other ways easier too. All right. Carol says, I adore my little brother 6,000. I am trying to sew on my Janome, but I really like my brother. You know, we had a brother too. And again, they're, they're very reasonably priced. I didn't see anything wrong with the brother. Personally, I have a $200 serger. I don't see anything wrong with it either. It works fine, you know, for my purposes. I don't feel like I need a $7,000 serger in my situation. Shelly saves the day. Hello. Shelly's a friend of mine. Shelly, have you been doing any, any sewing lately? So Shelly lives in the Seattle area and she's a fellow YouTuber. And uh, yeah, she's awesome. She also has a really, really cool and funny husband that I enjoy watching in her videos too. Um, so Shelly, hello to you. Hello to Adam, if you're watching. Liz, it's good to know there's more than one way to do sewing techniques. There certainly is. There's so many different ways to do everything. Um, but I just really, like I was watching, okay, so I was watching a uh, video earlier, this has nothing to do with sewing, but I was watching a video about um, color correcting in your camera. So instead of you doing a lot of color correction in post, like in your editing software, this guy was showing you how to change your camera settings so that you can get more punchy colors. And he got all of these comments like, Dude, like, you, you know, you should, you know, this is terrible. I don't like this, you know, but that's the way that he likes to do it. So I feel like that was, you know, why tell him that? Like he, uh, he uh, he's clearly, this guy is a very successful, by the way, this guy is a very successful filmmaker. So, you know, that it's sort of like the whole thing, like, like Dave Ramsey says, don't, don't take money advice from your broke brother-in-law, you know, like. This guy has millions of YouTube subscribers and he's very successful. He has shot, he's done some of the, my favorite videos on the internet. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to take his advice and try it out, even if there's a lot of haters. All right, Shelly, come on. All right. So Shelly has a sewing machine. I know you, I know you, you, you've, you've done a little experimentation. And uh, Max, yes, Valerie wants to thank Max. Yes, thank you, Maxie. And yes, if you guys are interested in the February box that I've just showed, 
Maxie says, contact her personally, and she'll see what she can do about getting you that box. Um, so, yeah, this has been an awesome show. I'm really excited. Hopefully next week we will um, be having our 10,000 subscriber party. All right, Shelly agrees. It's much easier to color correct in the camera than software later. Yes. And that's the thing. Like, I was, like, you know... I was doing, you know, I was I was watching the video. I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Because, yeah, color correcting afterwards does take a lot of time. So if you can shoot it the way you want it to begin with, then it saves you work on the back end. All right. Empress Noel, always do you. If it makes you happy, then it's okay. I would say yes, with the exception of, you know, certain activities. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, I think I jive with that general philosophy. Um, but I also find it funny that people are, like, giving this huge YouTuber advice about filmmaking that when he's clearly doing all right in his own, you know, it was sort of funny. Vic, I was at a sewing group one time and I was using the smaller spool cap for my larger thread spool. I was told I should be using the larger cap, like, little things that don't, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, like, Vic, how did that make you feel? Like, were you kind of put off by that? Like, I feel like... I, all right, so I feel like sometimes more experienced people might talk to you in a way that you feel like it's a little bit condescending, and I don't think that's cool. I think you need to treat everyone with respect and dignity and, and encouragement. Yeah, picky, picky. Yeah, exactly. Like, why even say that? You know, uh, for instance, okay, if someone's talking to me, um, one of my personal pet peeves is people who correct you all the time. So if you're talking to someone and say you say Porsche instead of Porsche, um, you know, if someone says something to me and they're obviously mispronouncing something, unless it's like a really big deal, like if they're if they're going like unless it's going to negatively affect them in the future, I'm probably going to be like, you know, whatever. Um, for instance, I did work with a lot of news anchors. Now, if they mispronounce something, that's a that's bad because then. You know, they're going to get a bunch of emails and phone calls telling them how stupid they are. Um, so in that case, I would say, hey, just to let you know, uh, the pronunciation for this word is this. But if it's just someone you're having conversation with, I don't bother. One, I don't want to look like like a real like a-hole. And two, you know, like, does it really matter if they're pronouncing a word wrong? Not really. It really doesn't. So if it's not something that's going to really negatively hurt them, you know, I'm going to let it go. You know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Anyways, okay. Vic said, so I asked her, so does it make a difference? She said, well, not really. And I said, huh. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. And Rosalik, a lot of great discoveries have come from people who did things outside of the usual way. I know. Isn't that the truth? Um, so, yeah, this has been a great show, everybody. And I will see. I'm going to head off soon. And uh, I need to I need to eat something. Get something to drink. Plus, my uh, I'm gonna be honest, my my um my legs starting to fall asleep sitting here, um. But I'm excited again. I want to thank Maxi of MaxiMakes.com for sharing these wonderful subscription boxes with me. There, they have truly been a lot of fun to do. I'm really all right. Sorry, you guys can't see this. I'm very excited to be part of the Maxi Mail Club, and I know in. Yeah, she keeps telling me not to make videos on these things, and I keep doing it anyway. So I'm sorry, Maxie. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun And uh, next week, and I want to thank everybody for, for tuning in. Um, and also, you know, you still got time. Check out the Craftsy Unlimited free weekend. Shelly saves the day. You should definitely do it too. Um, if you're just curious about, like, various classes about sewing and, like, crafting, this would be a great chance for you to check it out for free this weekend. And you can after today, you can get two weeks of Craftsy Unlimited for $1. So it's a good way if you want to just kind of, if you kind of just want to test the waters and see what you think. The other thing you can do is um, if there's maybe two classes you've been wanting to take, but you're not interested in any of the others, now you can take both of those classes for free or for a dollar without signing up for anything long term. Anyways, um... I appreciate everything. Yes, and if you if you like this uh, video, Terry, thank you for the reminder. I'm really bad at asking people this. Uh, if you enjoy these live shows, if you uh, want to support sewing and the overall mission of Sewing Report, feel free to uh, subscribe to this channel if you're interested in sewing, and uh, make sure to like this video. Thumbs up here. You know, if you if you hate it, you can do that too. You know, 
it's okay. Uh, but I appreciate everybody. And I will see you guys next week for hopefully a party. I'll be sharing my favorite videos and hopefully announcing some of the uh, my, my D stash plans. So I'll see you guys next week.